Super. Super. Bier. Okay, well, here we are. It's I lovable baby boy Brank, and I'm joined by the despised and hated bigger boy Jank. The despised one. That's what we shall call you from now on. Just call me the, the most, acolyte. That's it. That's it. The, oh, <laughs> we're not getting into political Star Wars off the bat, are we? Uh, acolyte is. We won't the, go there. Uh, we won't go there. We won't go there. Uh, we don't want to get. Uh, sued by Bob Iger, man, and all cancel, of his cancel, cronies. Cancel, cancel, uh, cancel, cancel, cancel. They actually were going after, I feel like, a couple of YouTubers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Their I videos did. were getting demonetized. Yeah, the it's Critical crazy. Drinker and I think Nerd Rotic or something. Mm. I can't remember. I just read like some title somewhere. I was like, oh, that's funny. Crazy. Uh, anyways, yep. this is not about the Star Wars Acolyte Show, the number one show on Disney+. Plus. This is about, uh, this is Super BS, a podcast about video games mostly. We are back from the dead. We're ready to break some bread and then bake that bread after we break it. It's going to be a weird order that we do things in. Uh, it's like croutons. Be pre- we're making croutons. We're so we first had dough, I guess, is the problem, and then we're going to start making the bread. Before we get to gaming, the thing that we all know you know and love, have you watched any good flicks recently? I know you're an acolyte fan. I know you just <laughs> love the power of women and all the the power that they have in that show. I mean, I'm crazy i hey, know all the characters so yeah, unity right what is that what do, what do they say <laughs> what? i actually i haven't seen the show no. i did see the scene where there's like witches yelling or something i i don't really know a ton about what's going yeah, on yeah but... i mean I, we don't need to get into all that but uh <laughs> yeah a lot of uh a lot of angry star wars fans out there and the people who make star wars actually hate the star wars fans so i mean it's a really interesting well, uh it's a good dynamic really i think for those two for crowds yeah star wars I, I, is uh it's, i think it's got another healthy 20 years ahead of it at this pace yeah i think i love the idea of like the people who make it don't like the people who like it and mm-hmm. this like hatred between the two i find it funny i last star wars thing i absolutely loved was rogue one rogue that one is was such great. a good movie rogue but one is great the person who is actually like bashing on star wars fans now made it so rogue one the director walked away from the movie uh after like it was it was finished like uh, kathleen kennedy made had a bunch of reshots done because it didn't suit her vision. So Gareth Edwards walked away from uh, Rogue One. He doesn't. He, I, th- I think he gets like a co-directing credit for that or oh. something. I don't remember what it was, but oh, he didn't finish the film. He finished filming the entire thing, but Kathleen Kennedy wanted a bunch of reshoots because it didn't fit whatever like narrative she was trying to put into it. But oh. I, don't, I don't know. I thought it was a pretty great know. movie. Yeah, I like Rogue One a lot. I mean, I'd heard about the Lord Miller and Lord or whatever the guys who did the Lego movie. I remember their like harrowing tale of Solo, which everybody's like, "Oh, it's gonna be better because Ron Howard's directing it." And that that one, I don't know, whatever. No. I don't hate it like everybody else yeah, does. It was, it was all right. It, it was, was fine. Star Wars, but I don't know, like like an Italian job type Star Wars, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm always a big fan of high stuff. So, anyways, <laughs> we love Star Wars here. That's what this is about. Facts. We love Star Wars. We love Deadpool. We love all the swearing and the cussing and Deadpool and Wolverine. We are excited for that. We just know that we only go to the raunchiest flicks. So speaking of raunchy mm. flicks, I've been hearing a little bit of a tale that you've been uh-huh. playing one of our favorite raunchiest anime games of all time. Which raunch game have you been playing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty G-rated, uh, you know. You should have seen his eyes, okay? Uh, I don't think it's G-rated. I would not let your kids see this game. <laughs> uh, blame. I busted out the Tales of Arise expansion. Because remember, I kept, I told Tales you, this was like a few episodes back. I was like, I'm going to start playing the Tales of Arise expansion. And, and I said, I you'll never do it, coward. You, yeah, you called me a coward. I was like, no, he will not get away with this. So I went and spent $30 on it immediately. Um... It's, How far are you? Uh, I'm I'm about an hour and a half in. It, I mean, well, honestly, it's, it's only two hours long, so you're almost done. Yeah, it's more of the same. You know, it's not. There's a new character that that is there, and I haven't had. I don't know if I get to play as her. She's a okay. like a, a Renan, I think you call it, one of the aliens that were like enslaving the people, the Danans or whatever. 
Wow, uh, you have a very good memory of what I was a very confusing well, story. Well, it's because I literally names. just started playing it again. But yeah. Oh, she, so they build up with this. They okay. build, yeah. So she's got you know her different two different color eyes or whatever. But I was under the impression I would get to play as her and like she would have some like new skills. But you don't get to play. She's kind of just been following me around. And areas that were previously accessible in the the main game, Base game? are okay. not accessible anymore. So is it like even... a separate mode you enter, or is it just in right. your, you start your file, or how does it work? Right, yeah. So when you go to the start menu, it you don't hit load game. You go down to uh, dawn of whatever the DLC okay. is called. And it's Beyond in the, the dawn. Menu. Yeah, yeah. And then you can go you click on that, and then it opens up this game. So you can go. I I don't I haven't been to any like new areas yet. There's all these like things called mausoleums that are popping up all over the world, and you have to go in. They're like little dungeons. And you got to clear them out okay. because. The, uh, the two planets have, like, collided and merged into one thing, so you're kind of dealing yet all, like, the the racial tension and all that stuff you got to deal with. But, you know, yeah. for the most part, it's really just more of the same. Um, you know, I will finish it just because it's in probably easy few hours. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all right so far. Sounds like you love it. I'd say from the way you're talking about now... It is game of the year contender. Uh, uh, you that, absolutely love it. Yeah. Well, at this point, I just I don't feel like it needed to exist, but I could I could be wrong by the time I finish it. I feel like a lot of DLC is that way, but not the DLC I've been playing. I've been playing Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree. We discussed it last time. I was really worried I wouldn't be able to start it because my new uh, character is not at General Radon or Moog. Um, and my old character is in New Game Plus 3. I decided to bite the bullet and try the New Game Plus 3. Sounds Shadow dangerous. Shadow of the Earth Tree. Uh, it's very dangerous. Biting bullets always leads to lead poisoning, as people know. <laughs> um, and anyways, Shadow of the Earth Tree is great. It is more of Elden Ring. It's a really neat setup. I only got to the first boss uh, when I started, which is it's just phenomenal. But I... I don't know if I'll be able to beat it. I feel like I'm, one, not good enough, and two, this first boss is, like, killing me in two hits. And unlike the base Elden Ring game where you can kind of level up to get stronger as you go, mm -hmm. this one, there is a special leveling mechanic that they added called, uh, I forgot what, like, Scud something. I can't remember what it is. But you get these seeds, and they make your character more powerful. Without those seeds, you can still level up normally, but it's just I, at the point you're at, it doesn't really matter. You already hit kind of a cap where you do very little uh, incremental increases every time you level up, and it takes forever to level up. So I don't know. I'm hoping I can beat it. This first boss, I fought probably 12, 15 times. They always, I mean, they hit two hits and you're dead, and a lot of the bosses do multi-hit combos. Yeah. So you kind of have to like dodge, and that's kind of always been the you know the From Soft Dark Souls thing where it's like, hey, you can't get, you pretty much can't get hit. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of have to play flawlessly. Mm -hmm. I'm, I wasn't good enough at playing flawlessly in Elden Ring, but there's a lot of ways around it. So I'm hoping for Shadow of the Earth Tree, I can either get some help or whatever, but I'm, I'm loving it. I recommend you play it. They said it's only the size of Limgrave, which is the first zone in Elden Ring, but so far I've, I've put in like probably two or three hours. It's, it's way, way bigger than whatever they said it i mean maybe in like actual size like one to one it's the same but the way you traverse it it's not like open zone like there's like tons of cliff sides and like the first place i went to you couldn't get through the main gate so you end up going off to the side and like i didn't even know you're supposed to go this way but then i see a waterfall with like some rocks off the side so i jump onto those and i jump up this top area and then i go through and i'm like oh now i'm in the castle so it's just like that type of exploration that Pretty much only Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom have provided where it's like, you just kind of go anywhere off any path. You going to play it? Uh, I still need to go back and finish uh, Elden Ring, so uh, maybe yeah, that'll so be I, on my list here. Just but put yeah. the 100 hours in that you need yeah, to and get to, where uh, to you touch are. it. Yeah. yeah, and then all you do is another 40 hours to play uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. So that's a Saturday night for me. No, I'm just kidding. 140 um, hours, okay? You can do it. I, so I've been reading a lot of, um, I don't know, like not articles, but like posts about with people talking about this, saying it's, it's okay. insanely difficult. Ever. And a lot of people are really frustrated that they're not probably not going to be able to beat it. And then it, uh, the game's creator came back and said, we seriously could not make this expansion any easier without breaking it. Uh, so I don't know if that was the expansion. I thought that was just about the game in general. Like we couldn't make it. 
oh, the game yeah, easier maybe. without breaking it. But it, you yeah. know, I don't know. There's always going to be that push, right? The ge- the journalists want uh, difficulty levels. The creators don't want the difficulty levels. Um, it, in the end, video games are art. Like someone makes them. It's not just like a commission by a corporation. I mean, it's probably going to become that way. That's what film is kind of now. Mm-hmm. Um, so till we get there, we still have like agency of the developer and. The developer wants a hard game. And guess what? The audience seems to agree. Elden Ring sold 25 million copies. It is a... It doesn't Juggernaut. seem like the audience yep. is that uh, that angry about it. And I have a feeling Shadow of the Earth Tree will probably be one of the highest selling DLCs ever. Even being the fact that only 30% of the player base can even access it. Because only 30% got to the area they need to to access it. So, I don't know. I think all of the anger and stuff, it's the same anger you always hear for every game always where it's like hey why is there not an easy mode why is there not an infinite you know i can't get hit mode why is there not like invisibility or whatever right because so many modern indie games that are trying to be difficult like tunic they offer that right they offer like a hey i'm invincible i just turn on this thing and now i'm invincible and i can fight any boss but in the end that also kind of cheapens the finishing the bosses right and they already have a ton of ways in elden ring to lower quote unquote lower the difficulty you can summon humans real players who could be really really powerful to help you out you can summon uh like a summon like a a double a clone of yourself to fight they also have at some of the harder bosses they have just npcs that you can summon that help fight so it's not that like the game, I think, is unfairly difficult. I think it's pretty fair. It's just really hard. That's the style of game they decided to make. And I, I always get a little bit frustrated when they're like, these people need to do the way I want to do it because of X, Y, Z. And why don't they do it because of this person and their disability and blah, 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 all this stuff. I've seen, I feel like I've seen blind players beat these games when they want to. You know what I mean? Like, you'll find ways around that. Now, could it be easier? Could they have accessibility? Sure. If they want to have that, I'm all for that, right? But it's it's the developer, the creator, who gets to decide those things. Yeah, and it's um, not at the end of the uh, sorry at the end of the day, it's not their job to cater to the you know the lower percent of people that want something changed in the game. Yeah. If they want to do that, great. Like I think all those accessibility things in um, what's it called, Last of Us Two and Horizon, and all the games where they really focused on that were great for the players who wanted that. But I just also get really frustrated when I'm like. Hey guys, they, this is the game they wanted to make. Like, you, yeah. we don't have to play every game, right? Like, there are tons of games out there that I don't play, I don't want to play, I don't care to play. I could get better and play, right? Like Sekiro, one of the best games that FromSoft has ever made. Which did you ever play Sekiro? Uh, I played a little bit of it. Um, yeah, it's yeah, incredibly difficult, it. incredibly hard. They don't have a leveling system. They have no way to get better. I had to bounce off. I wasn't good enough. Now, could I have gone and complained and said, well, there's no options and you can't level up? Yeah, I can complain about that stuff. That's fair. But if I go and sign a petition and try to get the developer closed and demand that they yeah, do what I want them to do, that's a bridge then we too wouldn't. Far. Yeah, we wouldn't have Elden Ring. Like, literally, this game, which is a lot fairer, you know? Because that was there. If we would have, like, tried to get them closed because we don't like what they say and do, you know? that. So that's my only thought. Like, for those of you who are out there who can't play it because it is too difficult for whatever reason... I'm sorry, you know, I, I probably won't be able to finish it either. I'm not that good of a player. But for those of you who can play it, who like Elden Ring, who like FromSoft, it's a great game. It is phenomenal. You should play it. If you like this type of game, that's great. Um, if you don't like it, that's fine. Elden Ring is, I, I think, one of the greatest games ever made. I still struggle whether Tears of the Kingdom or Elden Ring are my favorite game ever made. And it was Breath of the Wild before that, but Tears of the Kingdom, I think, is just so much better. Yeah. Um, by the way, did you ever finish Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, I did not, no. It's, are you uh, ever going to finish it? Or <laughs> I, I was just, <laughs> just thinking about it the other life? day. I'm like, oh, you know, I got to... I gotta finish this game and i just have not done it yet i just keep finding other things to play man where did you get without spoiling story beats there are four main zones you need to go and finish bosses to complete the game how many of those did you do none of them i'm like i didn't even fight the first boss yet what yeah did you even head that way like how much time did you give the game uh like an hour and a half two hours maybe 
Hashtag fake gamer. Um, hashtag fake gamer. You don't even know what a real game is. Hashtag uh, <laughs> he who shall not be named. Um, the despised one. I mean, that's going to be your actual Nick and your moniker. Yep. We're going to get yep. rid of uh, Jake and we're going to call you the despised, the despised one for not playing one, one of the greatest games my ever mark of shame, made. Man, my mark of shame. Okay, well, we'll forgive that. We'll actually mute that out. I'll bleep that whole section because I don't want people to know about how much of a shameful individual you are, how mm -hmm. sick you are. Um, and we're going to talk about Summer Games Fest. It's finally done. We talked about the Nintendo Direct. We talked about the state of play. <laughs> uh, what did you say? Oh, so that's it. It's done. No more. <laughs> it's done. No more. Um, we talked about the Xbox Game Showcase. We talked about Summer Game Fest. But what we haven't talked about is all of them together. We haven't talked. We haven't done like a recap of our favorite big titles. And Ooh, then yeah. we haven't discussed if we think they're actually going to come out. Right? They Some of these games got dates. Are they going to hit their dates? I so, don't want any false promises here. The thing is, I'm a truth teller, and I know all the truth, and what I say is truth, and what you say is a lie. So if you hear Jenks say something, it's a lie. If I say something, it's truth. If he agrees with me, then that's going to be on you to figure out who's lying. Uh, just remember that. <laughs> Frank is wrong at gmail.com. You know, you guys just, uh, just that keep, one's keep not... filling up that inbox. Yeah, just go to uh, happyhoarder.net. And that's where you'll write your <laughs> customer service uh, reply <laughs> to uh, to Jank. Say, hey, uh, you are a liar and a thief. And then you'll and go, thief, go to yep. Better B Business part. Bureau, yeah. <laughs> Dot Biz, um, BBB. Uh, okay. So anyways, we'll start with the state of play because that's what kicked off this whole nonsense in May. Uh, there's only a few big titles that were announced there. One of the big ones was Concord. We talked a little bit about it. Um, I am not going to be playing it. It is a Destiny-like, but just the PvP elements mixed with Overwatch. Are you going to pick this up when it comes out in August, on August 23rd? Nope. Do you think it's going to come out on August 23rd for PC and PS5? I think so. I think this is an easier game to to put out. Um, you know, Not a lot of elements to it. Besides, yeah. you know, besides like the different like story beats every time the player signs in to, you know, to get their game well, not, loaded up and all that. I don't think it's every time. I think it's monthly or something. Is right it? Now. Okay. So well, then it's, in it's that not case, like yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm interested. So the beta is in the, in July at some point. We don't know. Okay. My real thought, the only reason why I think it might not come out is if the beta gets lambasted. If mm. people hate it, we have seen this happen with Multiverse. We have seen this happen with a ton of other games. If this beta comes to like, you know, people hate it, yeah. I could see Sony hold the game for about two months really? if no one's going to play it. Okay. Yeah, I, I would at least imagine that. They, I mean, we've seen companies hold it for six months. Multiverse came out, they said, in beta, and then they unreleased it, and then they waited, what, like a year and a half and oh, released it again? It back out, yeah. So it's, I, yeah, I just don't think, I don't think we can trust things that are going to have a beta first to always come out because if that beta comes out and no one likes it, mm -hmm. I don't think a game's going to come out. The next big Sony one was God of War Ragnarok. Oh, we both played this already on PS5. It's coming to PC on September 19th. Is it going to come out? You know, I'm not, I, I would assume so, but I'm not sure like what the process is for converting like a console game onto uh pc do you have to like redevelop the entire thing or is it just a matter of porting it i don't i'm not sure what that process looks like i don't know what it looks like either i do think they've been pretty good with their pc dates so i'm gonna kind of say that hey this one's coming out september mm -hmm. it will be there september 19th the day they said uh the next few games did not have a actual date dynasty warriors had a year i'm not gonna even guess on that one if you yeah. want to feel free um infinite nikki had a beta <laughs> quarter uh, where wins meet didn't have a time frame at all. So there's a lot that didn't have any. So the next one that really had a time frame besides the VR stuff, which I just don't even think we care about is, uh, well, I guess we could discuss. No, they didn't give a, they gave a fall release window for until dawn. So I guess the next big one would be Astrobot, which is supposed to come out, uh, September, which is, it's so funny. They're doing the PC port of God of War Ragnarok se September, like, what was it? 19th, I want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Astrobot's coming to PS5 on September 6th. Do you think this one will make it? I think it will hold that release date because that is the too. beginning. Gaming season starts in September, as we've discussed before. And I think Sony, 
if they want to come out the gates strong this year, that is going to be a game that they would want to keep a release date for. Yeah, I think I think they kind of have learned their lesson from well, it's not even their lesson because it was all third party publishers, but yeah. they had a E three years ago where they announced a ton of games that didn't come out for four you know, in the case of Final Fantasy VII Remake, four years mm -hmm. after the announcement. And kind of what we've seen uh, Xbox get lambasted for recently, which is like, hey, you know, you said that you were going to release all these games. You're not releasing any of them, you know, for years and years and years. <laughs> well, how so, many games from the Series X, um, whatever, uh, what, what are the... the um What's the Xbox conference usually called? It's the... Uh, uh, Xbox Game Showcase? Game Showcase, yeah. How many... From the Series X Showcase, how many games from that have actually come out? Are, oh, from the original from Series the original X Showcase. One. Yeah. Probably I mean, four, we're five, getting to maybe? like... Yeah, I mean, some of the some of them already came out, like Halo Infinite, because you remember Series X Showcase was 2020, right? Yeah. So we had a few... We Forza just Horizon, got obviously. Hellblade... Yeah, we just got Hellblade this year, which that's the craziest one. That was the uh, Game Awards right? of like 2019 or 2018. I can't yeah. remember when it was. I think it was 2019 because I, I don't think they showed the Series X um, over a year early. But yeah, uh, Avowed is still not out. I mean, yes, Xbox has is hopefully learning this lesson. So we'll see what ends up happening. Um, next big one is the Summer Game Fest. And I was trying to find where every release is from that so this might end up taking a, a hot second uh okay here we go because i had a different one where they're like hey here's all the stuff i played because if you remember summer game fest is both a showcase like an e3 and then they also just have like a play like for journalists like a summer game fest play whatever it's called yeah so they can do that okay the first one we don't have a day for that's lego horizon adventures I don't think we care about Harry Potter. So I'm going to get to something that we probably will care about. Because I will say the Summer Game Fest, if you remember when we discussed it, it was pretty weak overall. And they didn't have that many dates. Okay. This is one I have some relative interest in. I think it's going to be hard for us to predict. Slitterhead. Do you remember Slitterhead? Um, let me see. I'm trying to... Slitterhead is oh, the uh, game from the Silent Hill 2 developer i want to say okay. where you go and you like go into different souls we talked about in the podcast i mentioned it was like geist on gamecube that's right and then you yep. fight like other monsters and the trailer looked very interesting like to the point where it's like yeah i might get it or if it's on game pass i'll try it but i also worry they have a november 8th release date right now and it looks pretty ambitious in terms of like you move from body to body and you get different abilities based on the body i could see something like that not coming out this year it is yeah. currently scheduled for the end of the year but i could also just as well see it like fall to next year yeah it, it's weird because they put instead of just saying like november 2024 they put an exact release date on there yep. and november 8th so they feel like it's ready for they sure feel like it's ready but i yeah you know like you said it's a very ambitious game and it's it's made by the silent hill creators so i can't yeah like it's got a big name attached to it so i can't I can't say that it will for sure come out on that release date. Yeah, it's tricky. I, I think also because we just don't know a ton about it. That was the first gameplay trailer. So it feels very strange to be like, hey, yeah, I am I guarantee you that this like developer it. will do this. Like Astrobot, I feel really confident to the point of I pre-ordered Astrobot already. It yeah. comes out in September. Like I'm super stoked for that game. Uh, the next biggie, and they didn't really do a, a trailer for this one, but they had like a commercial for it, is Black Myth Wukong, which has been in development for forever. I remember the first trailer in either, I think, 2020, might have been 2021, but around 2020, and its date is August 20th. We've seen like three, four trailers for it. It's been in development for a long time. Do you think it's going to make it out? I'm hoping. I, I hope so, but... You know, like you said, it's been in development for a long time. They've been showing us videos for a long time. And it seems um, August, and then having it be like, oh, yeah, it's going to come out like a month and a half later. That seems, yeah, seems it's, like it could I mean, be there's asking been, for a release date change. There's been a lot of hands on, so I could definitely see it, it make the date because people have played it already. Like plenty of people have been playing it. But yeah. I don't know if it's going to be like if that is enough right just people playing it and the game existing 
doesn't always mean it's going to come out right. No, in time. it doesn't. No. Uh, Summer Game Fest was pretty weak, so that was kind of all we had for those things. So, um, Xbox was a strange showcase. We will talk about some of the ones that are even just dated in a year because, like, I I'm not even totally positive those are going to come out. But they don't. They didn't put a lot of dates on their games. Uh, so we'll just discuss the dates that we do have and if they're going to make it. We'll we'll do the easy one first. Call of Duty Black Ops Six. It's coming yes. out in October. It's yeah. coming out. Yep, we agree with that. The next one, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. They did not give us a window. They all, or they did not give us a, like a a season window. They only gave us the year twenty twenty four. Is it gonna come out this year? I don't think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna call make a call and say it's gonna be pushed to February. I I am disappointed that I agree with you. To be honest with you, I, I really think it's not going to make it this year and only because they already have a lot of games coming out at the end of this year. Smaller titles, Age of Empires, Mythology and or Age of Mythology. Uh, they've got Call of Duty. They've got the new Flight Simulator. They've got the World of Warcraft game because they own that company now. Uh, and then you've got all the third parties like Assassin's Creed and Star Wars Outlaws. There's just too much. And the idea that they're going to put this game out at the end of the year, because they don't have an announced time frame for it yet. So unless the announced time frame is August, it's coming out September. I just, I don't trust it. The only area I could see them maybe release it is November, but I'm going to skip to a, another title that also has this same window right now, Avowed. Also is supposed to come out in 2024. Is it going to make it? I don't think so. I don't think so. so. It's not coming out this year either. So in your mind, both Indiana Jones and Avowed are 2025 titles. I think so, yeah. I mean, look at Ooh. if Avowed did not have such a troubled like history, if it had not been being shown to us for years, I would probably be like, oh, yeah, I could probably nail that release date. But I don't think – and there wasn't really enough shown about it to make me feel like it, this game's done. So I'm actually going to push back, and I think Avowed will come out this year because my thoughts are either Indiana Jones or Avowed is coming out this year. I don't think they both will. I think one of them will. Uh, I think Avowed is going to be the game. They made Outer Worlds. They already said the scope for Avowed is going to be similar to Outer Worlds, which was like a 20-hour title. They've been working on it for, what, three, four years now? Yeah. It's been a long time that yeah. they start since we saw the first trailer. I think Avowed is coming out. I think they both probably could come out. Indiana Jones looks pretty far along too, but I just think they're not going to want to release them on top of each other. No. And I don't see them releasing on top of Call of Duty, even though that's a different type of game that's now owned by Xbox. Do you want to really like like put two of your biggest titles for Game Pass in October? Well, that's the danger with the Xbox owning so many studios, though, is that eventually they're going to start to cannibalize themselves. Yeah, it's it's a tricky thing. I think one of them is coming out this year. I don't know which one yet. Um, Gears of War, we didn't get a date at all, so that one's easy. I think Doom was a 2025 date. I don't think they gave us like a, a window. So I'm not even going to speculate. Do you want to speculate that uh, about Doom, the Dark Ages? No. It looks yeah. amazing. You know, it looks yeah. awesome. So I, I mean, I'll play it when it whenever it comes out. I'll, I'll be I'll be waiting for it patiently. Yeah, uh, Diablo 4 is just a DLC. I'm sure it will hit its October release yeah. date because just DLC. I don't know the flight simulator time frame. I know it's sometime this year. I don't really care about it, so whatever. World of Warcraft's an expansion coming out August. I think it's going to make it. Yeah. Dragon Age The Veil Guard. So this is a fall 2024 release. There has been no date so far. The game has been 10 years roughly in development. That's when uh, Dragon Age Inquisition came out. Is this going to come out fall of 2024? I'm going to take a chance here, and I'm going to say yes. When, though? If it comes out, when is it coming out? I think I'll, gonna, I'll join you. They're going to hit that date that week right before Thanksgiving, so that when everybody's home Early, okay. for Thanksgiving, they'll be able to sit there and play it. I think that that's going to be the number one time for people to sit down and play that game. So that's what so I'm they're, predicting. They're going to push against Assassin's Creed Shadows, then, because that is also November 2024 release yeah yeah i think so because i i okay. feel in my gut that assassin's creed has does not carry the weight that it once did yeah i i agree with you that it's potentially not going to be the same type of game i can't remember when in november but i think it's that week that you mentioned 
Um, the other thing that I, I forgot about that's interesting is Stalker 2. Do you think that's going to... It's supposed to come out... Oh, when is it now? September? Um, but it finally got a release date. Uh, you know, it had one years ago, and then obviously the war broke out, so they they haven't had a release date for a while, but it's coming out the 5th of September, 2024. Do you think it, it's going to make it this time? I mean, they were supposed to come out, I want to say, 2022. I'm going to say no, and I, I and that, that's to say, not to say that, like, I don't hope that it does hit that release date, yeah. but over, you know, over in Ukraine, like, things are crazy right now, so I, yeah. I don't foresee anything going according to plan for a studio that's that's developing over there yeah and um then another and this was kind of like the xbox predicting show because this is they're the ones with the most ambiguous windows fable it got a 2025 release date that's it just the year 2025 is it gonna make it out in the year 2025 uh, I think so, but I think it's going to be sometime in the fall of 2025. I don't think we're going to see it, you know, any time between January and the summer. I hope you're right. I am a bit concerned because one, we've seen Fable. What is this? The third time we've seen it. Mm-hmm. it, it it's been a. They had an original teaser, and then they had the one last year that was funny, and then they had this one with some gameplay. It's Playground Games. They've turned out tons of Forza games. This is a little bit more ambitious, a lot more going on. Even though Forza is a big open world, it's still racing at the end of the day. Yeah. I'm hoping it makes 2025. Microsoft needs like a crazy 2025. They have what appears to be a crazy 2025 lined up. But I just am always skeptical. They've had a really bad last four years of just announcing stuff and releasing nothing. Yep. Which brings me to Perfect Dark. We Uh still don't have a release date at all. When do you think it might come out? At least two years. At least. I think at least so. 2026 is the earliest. Yep. Wow. Similarly, Gears of War E Day. Are you going 2026 as well? Yes. Uh, Maybe end of 2025, but. Okay. That would be. I'm. I'm very curious because one, we still don't know what type of game E Day is. If it's Mm -hmm. an open world shooter, that could be. Very big. If it's just going to be a linear game like the original Gears, I think next year is plenty of time for them to release it by. Yeah. Um, but next year, if they keep their word, they'll have South of Midnight, Fable, Gears of War E-Day, just from the games we know. Oh, and Doom. And Doom. So if they have those, and that's just their stuff, not including you know New Call of Duty and all the other stuff that they haven't announced yet. Yeah. Uh, the This one's a rumor, but I'm curious if you think it's going to make it out. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. The remake of Metal Gear Solid is supposed to come out in November. Gonna make it? I don't I don't know because that the first that we saw of this game was like literally during this showcase. So I No, we had seen it before. There had been two other teasers. Were there teasers for it? Okay. Yeah. Well, well, last maybe, year there had been two. Yeah, then I mean in that case, I don't I don't see why it wouldn't, but um yeah, the only thing that gives me pause is they still haven't announced the release date formally. The yeah. rumor is November, the anniversary of the game, but there's still no release date. So without that release date, you, it obviously it feels like they're not sure. Mm-hmm. But you know we've got Gamescom coming out up in August, so I think by Gamescom we will know if Indiana Jones, Avowed, and Metal Gear Delta are coming out this yeah. year. Yeah, I was thinking about that this morning too. I was wondering if they're gonna actually like pin actual day like dates onto these games. I think they have to soon, right? If they don't yeah. choose a day soon, they're not coming out. That's mm-hmm. my thought. I mean, they can technically do whatever they want. They have Game Pass. They don't really make that much off sales anymore. They can just release the game willy nilly, and the people who support it get the game. But that hasn't been what they've shown. They still seem to like to do big marketing because they sell the games on Steam and the games still sell really, really well on Steam. So they're still selling these games, right? And in the case of Doom and a few others, they're coming to PlayStation. So they need that like big lead up, right? So I think we're going to see dates. I just think they're... Xbox is in a really weird place right now, I feel like, which is a strange thing to say with how good their lineup looks. But they've kind of been like, you know, testing the waters with multi-platform games. Uh, Game Pass maybe isn't doing the numbers they were hoping it was. It's just, well, it's a strange thing for a company that has that many titles now and that many pub- uh, developers to feel like it's like, oh, we don't really know what we're doing, you know? 
Yeah, well, and part of me wonders too if that if they're hoping that releasing on a multi platform is going to make up for the game sale, the like the actual game sales that they've lost with Games Pass. Because I mean, I think we're going into a future where it's very possible that we could see you know a Halo or Gears come to the PlayStation at some yeah. point. I mean, the rumor was that the Halo One remake is coming to PlayStation. Like that, I don't know if or when it's coming out. I think by next year, uh, my guess is they're going to be testing the wars with Doom. Mm-hmm. My, if it does very well, my guess is Halo will be coming to PlayStation. Yeah. So yeah. It's, if it's they not... sell more copies on PlayStation than they make from Game Pass, and they don't sell more Xboxes, they're probably going to put everything on PlayStation. So... It stinks. Like I don't love that idea, but that's just they've started the trend, right? It's you know, it's money, right? You... We call this the James Cameron method. So if we keep releasing Avatar over and over again on different formats, then people are going to keep buying it over and over again. And you'll be the highest uh, grossing film ever because you consistently release it over and over and over again. <laughs> exactly, okay, yes. Ubisoft Forward was pretty lame, um, but from the few dates that we have to even discuss, we will uh, talk about those, which I think there was only really two. Star Wars Outlaws is supposed to come out August 30th. Do you think it's going to make it? No, I don't. You don't think it's coming out August 30th? I don't think so. I think it's still going to come out this year. I don't think it'll be August. I think there's been too much like backlash over some of the things that people have seen in the trailers. And really? Because the yeah. people who played it said it was pretty good. Did they had they? a gameplay hands-on um, for the Summer Game Fest. Really? Okay. Well, I mean, it's possible. I just, maybe I've just been reading the wrong, you know, the wrong articles. But um, yeah, I mean, I... I I think it'll still come out in this year, but I don't. I can't say I don't think it's going to hold that August release date. Okay, I think it's going to only because their other game, Assassin's Creed Shadows, comes out November fifteenth. Mm-hmm. So if that does, if they don't have August, does that mean they're going to put them on top of each other? I mean, I guess they could do September and November. That's probably the only other shot I see. Yeah. But I don't think you want to do October November for yeah. those bigger games. I think they're both going to take way too long to make. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of it for the Ubisoft Forward, our final showcase. And we discussed this last week, but we really didn't discuss how, like the likelihood of these games releasing and when they'll release. Uh, Nintendo Directs, so Mario and Luigi Brothership, which we talked about, that has a November 7th release date. Do you think that's going to make it out? Yes. Nintendo has always been really good about nailing those release dates. So if they say something's going to come out on a certain day, it will hit that that release date. What, has well, has there been anything that's been like pushed back by Nintendo uh, recently? The last one was the Advance Wars, the big uh, saga where they said Advance Wars was too close to the Ukraine war, so they pushed mm-hmm. it back an entire year. Yeah. Um, no, otherwise, they normally don't announce games till they're done, yeah. right? There's not many games where it's like, hey, I mean, I guess that's not true with Tears of the Kingdom, right? Tears of the Kingdom was the last biggie where they kept pushing it back. Yeah. But these smaller titles, no, they always release, right? Um, and that gets me, there's only like a couple more to even discuss. Uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Is that coming out January 16th? Uh, yes. Okay. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D from Square. Is that coming out November 14th? That one's a little more difficult to say. Um, hmm. I want to say yes, but I also don't think that it's impossible that it might get pushed back a little bit. So I agree with you. The only reason why I feel like it is ready is because I feel like I've read that people started playing it like maybe last year even. I know people played it this year and it's a very old game. You know, it's 1987, I want to say. So it's not like they're making a new game, right? Like the game's done. They just are redoing the assets and remaking parts of it, right? So I I think it's coming out. I think it's been too long, truthfully. I mean, they announced that game two years ago, I want to say, maybe three. And it's, again, a very old game. Um, Super Mario Party Jamboree is that going to come out October 17th yeah yeah I think so yep I agree I think Nintendo's just too solid with their release dates Zelda Echoes of Wisdom September 26th yeah I mean if they if it's a Zelda title and they pinned a release date on it then absolutely outside of Tears of the Kingdom I do agree with you Tears of the Tears of the Kingdom, they and Breath of the Wild, like all the 3D Zeldas, they have, have historically pushed those back. Yeah. Um, the last game to even discuss, and all they gave us was a year, uh, is Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Is that coming out in 2025? Mm, this one's tough. 
because didn't they didn't they kind of give a window last time too? Or a lot of people said it's going to hit twenty twenty four, but it did not. So, uh, the last time they announced uh, Metroid Prime, they they talked about it one time. I want to say like, hey, we're still working on it or something like one yeah. of those weird ones where they don't show anything. But the last time they actually showed anything from Metroid Prime Four was twenty seventeen, the year the Switch launched, okay. and I don't remember them having a date at all. And from what I remember reading, the game got completely rebooted from the ground up, like okay. started all over again. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to come out next year. I think like everything that Nintendo has been doing as of late, I think they're sitting on lots of games to the point where I think if they didn't think these were ready, they yeah. would have put games that are ready out, right? They would have just yeah. put stuff that's already done, but they have other stuff that's done, right? Like we know... Pretty much for almost a fact, but we know regardless because of the way these other games have worked, that they could release Wind Waker and Twilight Princess on Switch. We've talked mm -hmm. about that. The rumor is they're already done. Tons and tons and tons, 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 tons of things about that. They have not put those games out. They have not given us a release date. They have not even announced that those games exist, right? So the real question is, like, if these games aren't ready, why would they not put those games out immediately? You know, why would they not fill those yeah. places? So, yeah, I, I am overall a little skeptical of Microsoft's release window, but I feel like the rest of them are pretty, pretty good about that. I mean, they didn't promise much, right? They all promised very little, actually. Like, Sony has, what, Concord and Astrobot. Yeah. Um, Nintendo has Mario and Luigi, the Brothership and Zelda, and then otherwise it's got, like, a, a Mario Party game and, like, a remake of a Donkey Kong game from Wii, right? Like, nothing crazy. Um, Microsoft's the only one that, while they've only announced two games for this year, they're both fairly ambitious. I mean, I don't think Indiana Jones is going to be an open-world game, but it's probably going to be a fairly big, linear, Tomb Raider-like game that's in first person. My guess is it will at least be the size of... Uh, Wolfenstein 2, the new order, that wasn't called the new order, whatever it was, the Wolfenstein 2. The new Colossus uh, or whatever, yeah. Yeah, the new Colossus, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to at least be that size. And that was a pretty big game on a console where it didn't look as good, right? So yeah. I, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what we do, like where we go, like all of those pieces. But yeah, I think overall this year is pretty exciting, man. Um, do you have any like front runners for stuff that you are excited to play? Like anything that you're like, I'm buying this day one. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. I, I nothing, nothing. I'll be honest, nothing that I saw like blew me away. Like, there's a lot really? of stuff that I'm not gonna. I'll play on Games Pass when it hits, but I think Assassin's Creed, I think, is the one I'm probably looking forward to the most. Okay, um, you are a what, uh, what was it? Vanilla Song Boy. <laughs> Song of the South was one. Yeah, that that's was a, pretty. We didn't talk about. about that because that's a 2025 one, but yeah, uh, we should have talked yeah. about it. Um, yeah, I, for me, man, I actually am super excited for this year. I'm not like you. I'm not lame. I'm really cool and dope. Um, I think uh, Astrobot is going to be oh, incredible. Right. Yeah. Astrobot just looks so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. I cannot wait for a 2D Tears of the Kingdom like puzzle game where you just get to solve every, you know what I mean? There's just like yeah. a ton of fun pieces to it. Um, I actually am excited for Mario and Luigi Brothership, right? Like, I'm a big Mario and Luigi fan. I think yeah. that's going to be great. I mean, I have a list of games coming out that, like, I'm going to for sure purchase and games that I'm interested in. And just to give you the remainder from this year, right? Like, we, I just got um, Shadow of the Erd Tree. Uh, the next game that I'm excited for, Visions of Mana, August. That's Star Wars right, Outlaws, yeah. August. Uh, Legends of Ze Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom, September. Astrobot, September. Metaphor Refantasio, October. Mario and Luigi Brothership, November. Assassin's Creed Shadows, November. Metal Gear Solid Delta, November. And these are the games I'm buying. This doesn't include like Avowed or Indiana Jones. The and then Games Pass, yeah. Yeah. And then games that I'm still excited that I may pick up. I may, I'm not 100% sure, but I may pick up. SteamWorld Heist 2. I know it's an indie, but that's a great series. Uh, that's August. Black Myth Wukong, that's August. Silent Hill 2, that's October. Fantasy Life I, that's October. And then Dragon Age The Veil Guard. It, the only reason why I'm not super sure I'm going to buy it is because they've just, I don't know, they've been, uh, it looks a little bit iffy. The gameplay looks really good, but I'm still on the fence. So, but that's a fall release game. So, I mean, right there I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably at least 10 games 
that I'm excited for that we know about. I have a feeling there's probably gonna be about 12 games that I'm just ecstatic to play this year, not including some indies. And I think that, yeah, I think 2024 is going to be a really solid year. Yeah, is it is it 2023 with Tears of the Kingdom, Star Wars Jedi, like all of those huge titles that we love? No, it's not. But to be honest, yeah, last year was... Good stuff, though. Yeah, and last year was so big, I didn't even get to play a lot of that stuff. I never got very far in Baldur's Gate 3. I didn't get to finish Starfield, right? Like, there were too many games that came out, which is its own problem, right? Yeah. Like, we only yeah. have a limited amount of time, and some of these games take forever to beat. So I actually, I think I'm really optimistic, man. This sounds like a personal problem. Yeah, man. I should, I'm talking to the realist, right? You're the guy who finishes a hundred games a year. So (laughs) (laughs) this guy who uh, finished Tears of the Kingdom 10 times, right? That's what uh, you won't hear the rest of the podcast. I'm so good at starting games. I think that's my strong point right there. By the way, this is, uh, we won't talk much longer. Uh, This is early. We're going to finish this episode quick for you guys. Okay. This is a quickie, but a goodie. Um, Real quick, though, how I heard this on another podcast. I have to ask you, what percentage of games that you own have you ever played? Doesn't need to be beaten, just needs to at least be turned on. Like, what do you think the percentage of games you own have you played? That's a good question. I actually, like, got rid of a lot of games last year. So I, really? I own very few games right now. But um, even your, like, uh, uh, your collector's corner games that you went and yeah, found? Yeah, man. I, I, yeah, we, uh, we had to uh i had to pay some bills so i had to get rid of some games but uh oh wow i'm sorry to hear that yeah, yeah i uh because you spent so it's much just, time going after those games i did i did you know it's just that that point in life you know where the 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 bills all come due but uh yeah i mean as far as what i have right now i think i have uh, three or four that i have not turned on i think okay. um you know those are just like clearance games i picked up from walmart so uh, will I ever play them? I don't know. Like I bought them with the intention of playing them, but I can't say that I'm going to for sure get to them. You know, like I have, I really want to play control, uh, at some point, but I don't know like when I'm going to get a chance to play that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I got, I got a, a one piece odyssey game that, uh, you know, my kids wanted to play. And so we never got around to checking that one out, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. What about you? What do you got? I think if I stats. if I counted the games that I get from Game Pass, PS Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, and all of my digital purchases, I have probably in the last few years played less than 50% of the games I own. And that means Dang. even just turning them on to see the, the opening screen. Because especially if you count Game Pass, PS Plus, all of those things, if you count games I've purchased... I've probably played about 60 to 70% of those because yeah. I've t- turned on those games at least for a, a little bit, right? There is a, a different feeling when you pay for something versus than when it's part of a service, right? Mm-hmm. When it's part of a service, you might turn it on, you might not because it's just something you already pay for. And yeah. as long as you're getting other things from that service, who cares? But when it's part of like something you actually went out there and spent, especially if it's a full price game, I would say there's probably less than 10 or 20% of games I paid full price for yeah. that I've never played. There are probably 10 or 20% of my backlog that I've never even turned on that I paid for. But I try not to do that very often. World's most so, ambitious gamer right there. I, I, I mean, man, compared to you, I feel like a gaming god. I'm like doing <laughs> 420, no scopes. I'm doing nonstop. <laughs> That's uh, right. 360 snipes, man. I do that in games that don't even allow you to bring guns in. I mod them in, just mod and then I in. make the so I mod good. in the boss so to be good, headshotted, man. man. Yeah, dude, I'm just that good. I brought short hike, man. I sniped the mountain from the bottom of the cliff. Yeah, Beat so the game immediately. So many skills. You're just on supercheats.com, right? That's where you're going. Wouldn't it be really funny though to like become a modder who just all you do is like mod stupid things into games like a short hike where you levolution and all you can do is destroy the mountain so you can never finish the game. <laughs> the whole game is a that that's a in and of itself, that's a million dollar idea. Okay. So that's Absolutely. that's easy mill. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there are people out there that do that though. I'm there are idiots abound, okay, my friend. Yeah. People just look at the comment threads of the acolyte. There are people who don't like the acolyte. That proves to you that they're idiots. How could you not like the acolyte? I don't understand. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you don't like the acolyte, you are a racist, bigot, sexist, misogynist, genderist, uh, transphobist. Uh, You're all of those if you don't like the acolyte. And, uh, And if you don't give Disney money to go to Disneyland every year, 
I don't even want to tell you what you are, okay? <laughs> you hate you disgust me. Children in other countries, you are a terrible human being. You need to be given Disney your checks. So, you can mail them directly to Bob Iger if you'd like, but you can also just send them to disney.com. Uh you, you just put Disney on the front of the envelope when you put your check and in they'll the mailbox. They'll know. Just go straight to uh, Walt's house, yeah. Oh, yeah, Walt's still living. You just don't know. He's in his cryo chamber. Well, my bros, we have done it. We lived it. We did it. We accomplished. We conquered. We are watching House of Dragon season two. We are watching The Acolyte. We are watching uh, whatever else is on TV. Where where do we we find time for all this? I don't even know, my bro. Uh, But we are watching it all, and we love it all, okay? Um, And yes, I actually, real talk, I have not seen House of Dragon season two. I did like season one. I don't know how I'm going to get around to season two. Did you watch it yet? I have not. So we're in the we're in the oh. same boat. Well, that's your boat sucks. So I'm gonna try to get on a better, <laughs> cooler boat. I don't want to be in the boat with you. So you saying that now is gonna make me watch it. <laughs> the abandoned ship. All right. I will talk to you later. Peace. Peace.